how's it going? Look at us, doing a little video today, huh? Can't tell, I'm actually in Greenwood Cemetery right now. Not to do Greenwood Cemetery, we're gonna do the neighborhood of Sunset Park around it. I just thought this was a nice view. Pretty cool, right? All right, anyways, uh, before we start, Rob, how are you? Doing all right. Yeah? Those birds seem to disagree. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we got some parakeets running around here. Anyways, guys, we're gonna do the neighborhood of Sunset Park today. Got my little coffee, huh? Third one today, <laughs> you know, no big deal. Not, not wired at all. But we're gonna have a good time talking about the history of Sunset Park. Tons of history, tons of diversity. This place is amazing, you're gonna love it. Before we start, guys, check out the Patreon, baby. That's how I fund these things, very important. Lots of uh, extras. If you've seen one of these videos before, you're gonna love it, uh, and you know it, <laughs> you know. Also, you know, on that note, go ahead and like and subscribe already. Get that out of the way. You don't have a to-do list, so you can just enjoy the show, huh? Uh, that being said, I don't want to ramble too much. Rob, are you ready to do this? Let's go walk around, baby. Let's do it. Huh? You getting creeped out sitting in front of a cemetery? No. You're lying. You're lying. All right, let's do it. Okay, look at this beautiful view, everybody, huh? How beautiful. We're in the second highest point in Brooklyn, Sunset Park, the first being Greenwood, where we started. By the way, I'll do. I'll say Greenwood for another video. It's a cemetery, I'm not gonna be prancing around there. People are gonna freak out, think I'm doing like a prank video or something, I'm gonna be paintballing tombstones or something, so you gotta get permission, all that stuff. Anywho, we're gonna start at the beginning here. Look at this view, Sunset Park, called Sunset Park because you get a great view of the sunset, huh? That's the west side. This whole area was trade paths and different ways of transporting goods and people for the Lenape Native Americans, specifically the Canarsie Indians in this area, uh, before it was bought up by the Dutch. So the Dutch kind of moved over to this area. As you can see, we are very close to Lower Manhattan, which back then was New Amsterdam. Hello. So the Dutch and the French Huguenots, um, the French Huguenots, obviously you know, they're a Protestant group from France, were persecuted by the Catholics who said to the Huguenots, Huguenot, more like Huguenot, get out of here. So they had to leave and they came over here. They settled here in New Amsterdam among, among other groups uh, at the time, very diverse from the beginning. Famous Huguenots, actually Etienne de Lancy. Etienne de Lancy was the father of James de Lancy, was the father of James de Lancy Jr. The street de Lancy through the Lower East Side. You can get more of that information in my Lower East Side video, okay. Important to mention, 1700s, 1600s, early 1800s, Brooklyn was farms. Mostly farms, especially out here. Uh, you can look at old maps and it's really just big farm plots, which also means in New York until the year 1827, slaves. Yeah, sorry to be a bummer, but once again, Brooklyn was very filled with slaves. About 20% of the people in Brooklyn were enslaved and also about 41% of households had at least one slave. All very depressing, so here's a picture of my cat. Aww. Now this area stayed undeveloped, fairly undeveloped, until all the way until the Civil War, really. After the Civil War was when it started to get kind of scooped up and developed with townhouses and people moving out here. In the last three decades of the 1800s, for example, it went from about 9,500 uh, inhabitants to about 31,000. So that's when it slowly started to grow. You start to get more institutions and apartment buildings and all kinds of things kind of popping up around then. Important to note, 1890 was when this park started to be kind of uh, built up. In the 1930s, they put a pool here. Uh, in fact, Robert Moses, very famous uh, controversial guy, uh, built a lot of stuff in New York, also destroyed a lot of stuff in New York, and was kind of racist. But he uh, built a pool here, one of the 11 pools that he built using WPA money during the Great Depression were very important. Uh, it's this beautiful Art Deco little building. And in fact, uh, in the early 1900s, this park had a six-hole golf course. You can come here and you know wear your ridiculous clothes and go golfing uh, with all the other golfers. Uh, not here anymore. So it's changed over time, but this is actually the park that the neighborhood gets its name from. Sunset Park used to be part of Gowanus or Bay Ridge, uh, and it's kind of got its own uh, neighborhood name in like the mid 1900s. Uh, so we'll talk more about the names and stuff as we go, but we're just getting started, baby. All right, so we are now at the part of Sunset Park that made it what it is today. We are at the water front. This is the piers, baby. We're actually at Brooklyn Army Terminal. This was built in 1919. Cass Gilbert was the architect. Uh, you may know his name from designing the Warworth Building. Huh? Talked about that in other videos. He designed the Alexander Hamilton Customs House. Very famous architect, but you would know all that if you'd seen other videos. Huh? What are you doing? Get on it. Anyways, this was built for the Navy back when uh, a little man named FDR 
was the Secretary of the Navy. I don't know if you ever heard that name. Keep in mind, piers all through Sunset Park, we're talking about miles of coastline here, are what brought immigrants here in the end of the 1800s. Uh, it brought immigrants in the early 1900s. So people like the Irish came to work the docks. People like the Italians, the Scandinavians. During World War II is actually the largest military supply base to serve during World War II. 20,000 people worked here. Remember, we talked about Brooklyn Navy Yard being another big uh, addition to that as well. This was a military supply base. Uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard, just watch that one. Very important history there. So famously, this is the spot where in 1958, Elvis shipped off to his army job. He joined the army, huh? He shipped off in 1958 and went and served in Germany. He chose to serve in the army rather than like sing songs for them and everything for a couple years uh, because he wanted to be with the regular people. And it was also part of his manager, Tom Parker, who Tom Hanks played in the movie. I don't know if he was wearing a fat suit or not, but I think he, I think he was. You know, you know who Elvis is? He's the guy who sings that song, uh, Wise men say only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with you. Huh? Pretty good. Yeah. All right. Very underwhelming response, fine. Anyways, it was in Germany that uh, Elvis uh, met his uh, future wife, Priscilla. Huh? Yeah, it's also where he met his other future wife, amphetamines. Yikes, he got hooked. <sighs> Elvis. But the neighborhood also got changed a lot as the years went on. One of the major things was the Gowanus Expressway, uh, the, the highway that was rammed through Third Avenue, uh, which you'll see as we go to that hurt the neighborhood in the mid-1900s. Post-World War II was, was a troubled time for a lot of neighborhoods like this what, that made their living off of manufacturing and shipping. Uh, because remember, shipping eventually left uh, places like Brooklyn for Newark, where there was more space. Remember, container shipping took over. Huh? I don't know, this is the international symbol for container shipping, huh? But it took over and you need more space to save those containers and to store them, and you didn't have that here. You didn't have that in Manhattan, you didn't have that anywhere, so it went off to Newark. And now today, it is the ferry line. This is where you can take the New York City ferry. There's a whole string, different lines of it, different colors, like the subway. You can take it to different parts of the city, Queens, Manhattan. Go on there, huh? Taking the views, especially when the, when the weather gets nice. I mean, it's great. Just don't get on your phones, huh? Anyways, what the hell am I talking about? Let's keep it moving. All right, so the end of the 1800s, you had the neighborhood growing. I was telling you, more people were moving in. You also had more housing being built. You had brownstones nearby, which are called brownstones because of the hue of the sandstone used. It was mined in Connecticut, New Jersey. Some of the mines are still there. You can see the colored stone there, a uh, very distinct color. But you also had single family homes like this one. Not many, but this is one of the few left. Built in 1907 by Hard and Short, who was a famous architectural firm. They built the Alwyn uh, Court in New York uh, on 7th Avenue there near the park. They also built the Red House in Upper West Side, uh, but it was built for a man named Dr. Maurice T. Lewis. This is a landmark building here in the neighborhood, and Dr. Maurice T. Lewis, uh, a physician, but he was also the head of the Bay Ridge Savings Bank here, uh, which is kind of messed up. I don't know if I want my doctor dabbling in the banking arts. It's like, dude, just fix my tumor. I don't have time for you trading mortgage-backed securities, all right? Here in Sunset Park, you have one of the biggest urban historic districts in the Northeast, and it takes up a lot of space here. Uh, and a lot of the buildings and neighborhood is protected because of that, which would change. Uh, well, other parts of the neighborhood are not protected, and those have been changed since. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little later. But yeah, late 1800s, people started to move in. People were working the docks, all this stuff. It started to become more and more of a neighborhood then. Uh, but let's keep it moving, man. We got a lot to cover. All right, so because there were seafaring jobs and all that stuff in this area, we talked about that, um, there were lots of immigrants who came here to kind of take advantage of those. So you had lots of different, uh, I guess, nationalities coming in here from the get-go. One of them, believe it or not, was the Finnish population. At one point, there was up to 20,000 Finnish people from the Finland country huh, of Europe. Uh, and that's a lot of Finnish people, especially considering that the city, I'm sorry, the whole country only has like five and a half million. That's not a lot of people. That's like the line for Katz's Deli on the weekends. 
and I'm actually standing in front of a place called Alku Toinen, which means new beginning in Finnish, uh, and it's here on 43rd Street, and it's actually uh, one of the first co-op apartment buildings in the history of the United States, before there was actually a co-op law here in New York. By the way, all a co-op building is, is a building where when you buy an apartment, you own a share or shares of the corporation that owns the building. So you don't actually own the apartment, you own shares of the corporation, which is interesting because it reflects the size of your apartment, all that stuff. It's a whole different way to kind of buy buildings. So you have to separate yourself from the other applicants. So a couple tips, learn to juggle huh? before you go in front of that co-op board. And also, don't be a minority. Uh, unfortunately, that's another problem they have here with co-op buildings. You also have on 40th Street, which is Finlandia Street, uh, the, the Finnish population was here up until the late 1900s, so that's one of the populations. You also had Polish, Our Lady of Szechowa. Sorry, I'm, I'm butchering that. Uh, but I do speak a little Polish. Huh? Kava, Apteka, Dzień Dobry. Huh? That's all I know. I used to live in Greenpoint. You have Norwegian was a big, uh, big uh, I guess, group. You had Lapskaus Boulevard. They called it part of 8th Avenue Lapskaus Boulevard, which is uh, means Norwegian Beef Stew Boulevard. Uh, you know, they're going <laughs> to they're gonna rename it like, you know, General So's Chicken Boulevard now because it's Chinatown. Tons of different European ethnicities who came here because of those, uh, you know, shipbuilding and pier related jobs. There's actually a park called Leif Erikson Park to the south in the 60s, uh, just south of here, with a whole little plaque and everything of Leif Erikson. You ever heard of that guy? Famous Norwegian, that's what he is. Anyways, that's, uh, that's the Finnish population, which is famously uh, was centered here in uh, Sunset Park. We got more to cover, baby. We still got more to, I gotta, we gotta talk about other immigrant groups and the development of the neighborhood, so let's go. All right, well, I told you so. This is a part of Chinatown. This is one of the many Chinatowns in New York, but I'm here on 8th Avenue. 8th Avenue now today is where the Chinese population is located, which has been growing consistently since the second half of the 1900s till today. One of the reasons it's grown here so much is because of the Manhattan Chinatown. Well, first of all, we're off the N and the R trains, which will take you down here, but they'll also take you to the Chinatown there. So it's a connection here. I've covered Chinatown in Elmhurst, covered Chinatown in Flushing, covered the Chinatown in Manhattan. And all of these things were, were grown when the subway... Cool motorcycle, dude. When the subway developed, it helped people spread out to other parts of the city. Chinese immigration to the United States is a relatively late, later phenomenon because in 1965, quotas that were implemented in the 1920s were lifted. Also, the Chinese immigration was allowed during World War II because there was actually a law passed in the United States in 1882 called the Chinese Exclusion Act. That's a real thing. I feel like every American should know that. Anyways, this here on 8th Avenue is kind of the Chinese congregation and the Chinese Chinatown. They call it Little Fuzhou. That's uh, one, of the, one of the principal cities in the Fujian province, uh, which is one of the one of the provinces is actually to the north of Guangdong. It's on the water, so a lot of people have always kind of come from there. Sorry for the butchering the pronunciations, okay? At least I didn't say, you know, Fujian. Then they're Fujian province, all right? So relax. But this whole area, too, also, because it was connected to the other Chinatown, this is actually in 1996 where the Feng Hua bus service started, huh? Anyone who's, who lives in New York knows about Feng Hua taking you from New York to Boston or to Philadelphia. Well, that started as a shuttle between Manhattan and uh, Lower Manhattan. Chinatown in Lower Manhattan, sorry, to Sunset Park Chinatown, huh? and then it expanded out. Interesting. So just so you know, in New York City, there's they, they estimate around 700 to 800,000 Chinese. That's crazy. That's a lot of people. Even though in China, 700,000 people is like the size of a mid-sized truck stop. But here, that's a lot, man. And here it's in multiple towns. And I've told you this, I've covered it in multiple videos. Elmhurst, Flushing, Lower Manhattan Chinatown, Bensonhurst, all Chinatowns. Um, Go watch those. Go watch them right now. I'll put links in there and everything. What else are you gonna do? You probably work from home, which means you watch YouTube videos anyway. So the Chinese make up one third of the population of Sunset Park, which is a good amount. In fact, in 2013, they started this whole project to build a friendship arch here on 8th Avenue. And by 2020, it had uh, folded. They, they cited political tensions, but it might not be true. Uh, at the time, what the mayor today, Eric Adams was actually the borough president. Some people here blame him. So that makes him there arch nemesis. Come on, that was pretty good, right? Rob? Oh, yeah. All right, you're lying to me, but that's okay. Anyways, uh, yeah, they were, gonna, they were gonna put an arch here. Kind of interesting, didn't do it. Um, we'll see if they eventually revive it. Lots of immigration here in Sunset Park, very cool. Here's an interesting fact. You think of what the most American restaurant you can imagine in the world is. McDonald's or something, right? 
Well, here's a little fact for you to give you an idea of what real American food is. For every McDonald's in the United States, there are three Chinese restaurants. How about that for a fact? I guess Chinese food is American food, really. Hmm? Anyways, uh, let's keep it moving. I, we have more to talk about. And I'm gonna get run over by a car. All right, so now we are on Fifth Avenue, and we're talking about the most recent immigrant group, and that is the Latin American group. That's right, estamos aquí con los latinos, jodido. <laughs> no big deal. Now, just to give you an idea, 40% of the neighborhood is Latin American. Now, now, also keep in mind, we've talked about a lot of immigrant groups, but in the 60s, 70s, when this neighborhood was kind of declining after World War II, it was kind of immigrants that saved the neighborhood because people were leaving New York. People, remember, there's got white flight, people going to the suburbs, all that stuff, but immigrants were still coming in. And here you had, like I said before, Chinese, but you also had Latin American. Today you have 40% Latin American, but you also have it growing. Uh, and they started early on in the 1920s even with the Puerto Rican population who came here. Uh, the Puerto Rican population, remember 1917, the Jones Act, I'm sure that's what you were already thinking. <laughs> the Jones Act, which made uh, Puerto Rican citizens. But then post-World War II, you had all of the, I guess, policies being implemented in Puerto Rico, uh, kind of devastating the agriculture there, pushing people to the cities. And then there was an overflow of people there, not enough jobs, so many people came here, only to find that the manufacturing jobs here also left. But you still have a Puerto Rican population here as well. There's actually a Puerto Rican Day Parade here every year, huh? Here in Sunset Park. Did you know that, Rob? No. Well, now you do, huh? That's what this is for. And keep in mind, too, that this immigrant, I guess, replacement uh, in the neighborhood it helped kind of uh, soften the blow of post-World War II kind of decline and vacancies. Uh, and if it wasn't for that immigrant population, New York would have turned out a lot like, let's say, Detroit. Uh, Detroit is a good example of a city that didn't have that as much. They lost all their jobs and it emptied out and it went bankrupt. New York almost went bankrupt too, but uh, one of the reasons it did not, one of the reasons it was safe was because immigrants kept coming in. Uh, poor old Detroit, man. It's kind of the butt of a lot of jokes, but for what it's worth, I was rooting for them to get to the Super Bowl and yeah, it wasn't their year, maybe one of these years, but this is the most recent immigrant group. And almost, like I said, almost 40% is uh, Latin American, but this is it, man. This is a uh, this is Brooklyn, baby. This is New York now. Remember, Puerto Rican kind of moved in this neighborhood to only to be added on to by Mexican, El Salvador, Guatemalan. All these different places are here now as well. And I was telling you how the Norwegians had their Lapskaus Boulevard. I mean, today you could have a, you know, Mofongo Place or something, you know, or, or Platano Street. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, the, that sounds a lot more racist for some reason, I don't know, than Lapskaus Boulevard, but you get the point. Um, you got some music playing in the background. It's going to get copyright stricken. Perfect. And you have, uh, you know, issues with that too, because as the population is kind of, they're more vulnerable, they're poorer, they get taken advantage of employers. In fact, they had a problem here where grocery stores were locking the employees overnight in the grocery stores to work as janitors and stuff. That's messed up. But, you know, once again, you have groups that, that form organizations to protect these populations and fight against things like gentrification and whatnot. So, uh, you know, it's a constant struggle, but something to be uh, aware of. Uh, all right. Well, let's keep it moving. We already talked about the piers and how important the industry was here. Well, I'm standing in one of the biggest developments here along those lines. This is called Industry City. Now, the history of it goes back a little further. So, late 1800s, there's this guy named Rufus Bush. He has uh, this kind of oil business here uh, around in Brooklyn, and uh, he eventually is bought out by a guy named Rockefeller. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Yeah? Anyways, he's bought out with his money. He buys a, a big old yacht, and he sails around the world with his kids and his wife. Beautiful story of a billionaire for the ages, huh? Anyways, he comes back, and his son, Irving Bush, takes some of his inheritance, builds this thing called Bush Terminal in the 1890s, eventually expands into these massive industrial businesses you see here today. These, these buildings, you know, we're talking about like two miles up and down the piers here in uh, Sunset Park. It attracted all kinds of companies, things like Topps, the baseball card company. Huh? You kids don't know about baseball cards? Back in the day, you know, I had always crossed my fingers for that Mickey Mantle card while I was at this malt shop, an ancient bastard. But, uh, you know, and all kinds of things like that. Uh, at least I didn't start talking about Tamagotchis. So this was a huge development. In fact, during World War II, this was the largest multi-tenant 
complex in the United States. It's over 25,000 employees. And also keep in mind, after World War II, when industries left the city, this kind of fell into disrepair. But then it was, again, kind of revived in the 1980s, a lot of garment industry, which was leaving the city at that time, also for, for price things, kind of came here and set up shop. Uh, this is actually one of the biggest garment employers here in this area uh, outside of the garment district in Manhattan. So these kind of things kind of revived. Now today, this is a, the site of a big kind of showdown because they're trying to rezone more and more of this area to include things like hotels, to include things like big retailers, et cetera. And the neighborhood is kind of pushing back. In fact, a re the, the, one of the big owners of this area is the same owners of Chelsea Market. Uh-oh, you guys know where this is going. You ever been to Chelsea Market? They specialize in anything you could possibly want to buy overpriced. It's a nice place, don't get me wrong, but it is not cheap. Uh, and you know, you may know the building too because it was sold to Google a few years ago for $2.4 billion. Yeah, Chelsea Market was home to the Nabisco factory way back in the day. That's where they invented Oreos. But $2.4 billion, come on, Oreos aren't that good. But so people here have been fighting that kind of thing. And in fact, that developer pulled his application to rezone a lot of this because of the neighborhood's fight against it. This neighborhood is very united. While it is, uh, like I said, very immigrant heavy and uh, diverse, it is very united and there are lots of different groups and nonprofits and NGOs that make their home here and fight against things like this, protecting the population here, who otherwise would not be taken into consideration in policy decisions like that. And this neighborhood today is growing up in value despite uh, these kinds of fights and successful battles. So to give you an idea, the median home price, single you know, family building, which was in 2000 would cost you about 346,000, in 2017 went for about 1.3 million. That's in 2017, that's still seven years ago. So it's probably gone up since then. This is a very important takeaway. It's about city policy. It's about special interests and it's about their collusion in basically excluding the people from the neighborhood and people with less and fewer resources from the decision making and the democratic process. It's anti-democratic, that's the problem. It's a curation of a neighborhood uh, you know, based on how certain people want it and it all has to do with money. What's gonna increase the land value? What's gonna increase the bottom line? This is what makes the world go round. Smelly, stinky money. Give me that manna, huh? Anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get on a soapbox here pretty soon, uh, which wouldn't be hard to find here, it's so industrial. Yeah, there's soapboxes lying around. All right, well, that's the whole thing. All right, we're, that was pretty good, right, Rob? Yeah. We talked about it a lot, let's keep it moving. Ah, look at that, taking in the view. Man, we made it to the end. What a journey, a little odyssey we went on, if you will. We started out talking about how the neighborhood developed. We talked about the piers. We talked about immigration. We talked about everything. And this really is an amazing neighborhood, really an awesome example of the diversity that has got to be fought for. Remember that, you got to fight to keep it. It's not something that naturally occurs. Uh, but an awesome place. Uh, if you guys like the video, you know, do the thing. You know, check out the Patreons where you get all the extras, huh? And also where, you know, how I support these things and, uh, you know, keeps me afloat. Uh, water, boats, all right. Also, uh, like and subscribe, that whole thing. Rob, did you, did you learn something? A couple things. A couple things, huh? that's it. Unbelievable. Sunset Park, we did it. What a lot to cover. I could have spent two, two full days here doing this, but you gotta cram it in, so relax on the keyboard worrying, warrioring. Huh? Don't tell me how many things I didn't cover, whatever. Just watch it, enjoy it. Uh, I'm sorry, that was me. That was me definitely venting. All right, I'm, I'm rambling. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making it this far. See y'all later. Ah.